This is David with Best Rest Products, home of the Cycle Pump Tire Inflator that has a lifetime warranty. Today I'm going to be doing a project where I'm going to clean the invisible fuel filter on my BMW 800GS. I say invisible because there's no separate fuel canister assembly that you can replace once it gets dirty. Instead, the way BMW has built this is they've made the fuel filter uh, a component that's molded permanently onto the bottom of the fuel assembly, the fuel pump assembly on the other side. So why do I want to replace my fuel filter? Well, I put a Google Tech in the gas tank fuel filter in this bike in spring of 2018. But the bike is a 2005, so for the last 13 years, whatever I put into my gas tank has been sloshing around inside, all the contaminants, all the dirt, all the grit, all that stuff and it's been sucked into the inline fuel filter assembly uh, that's part of the motorcycle system. That means that the fuel pump has been sucking all that stuff for 13 years and I think it's time to replace the fuel pump. Has it failed yet? No, it hasn't. I'm doing this as a prudent precaution, but in any case, I wanted to get all the stuff out of the gas tank and you're going to see the results of what I found inside this gas tank. It's pretty surprising. So what does this project take? Well, it takes a video like this to kind of show you how to do it and explain it. A lot of videos will just do it, but they don't explain the ins and outs, the hows and the whys. And that's something we like to do. I've already done this project, so I'm kind of doing it the second time for you so that you can learn from what I learned. Uh, I got this stuff from our uh, Google Tech supplier in Italy, and then I turned it into something that we can understand in English, and I dug a little bit deeper to give you the uh, specifics, give you the tips, tell you the things that I learned, and share this knowledge. Now if you have a BMW that's uh, after 2012, I believe, it has a separate uh, removable, replaceable uh, inline fuel filter, and we've got videos on that. And also the liquid cools have a separate filter that you can replace. The video will cover that too. This is specifically for the bikes that have the, quote, invisible fuel filter, and you'll see what I'm talking about when I take this thing apart. So let's get started on the process. By the way, we're shooting this uh, in the Mount Lake Terrace uh, Best Rest Film Studios instead of down at Napa Vine. It seems that my uh, videographer, Steve Irby, is on his 50th wedding anniversary cruise, and so he wasn't available to make this movie. So I'll do the best I can doing it all myself, it's not going to be as good as it usually is, but I'll give it a try. Here's what you'll need to do this project. Some rubber gloves, a Pyrex container or a large container to put the fuel in. You'll also want a five gallon jug if you have a lot of gas in your tank. Fire extinguisher for safety reasons. The turkey baster. This is the wife's Thanksgiving baster. I'll probably replace it when I'm done, but I might not. Uh, some Teflon tape for sealing threads. This is a little uh, rubber cap to cap off the end of the fuel housing so we can fill it with injector cleaner and slosh it around. Black marker for marking the big metal ring. Crescent wrench for removing a fitting. Fuel injector cleaner like Tecron or something similar. A variety of probes which are used to poke around and release a fitting. A very fine, small, flat screwdriver. This is going to come in handy depending upon uh, your existing fuel pump, whether you have to take off one fitting. Phillips screwdriver, a variety of screwdrivers. Torx wrench for removing the gas cap assembly. This is the uh, micrometer to measure the barbs on the fuel pump. A moto siphon, which is used to siphon out any fuel in the tank. Um, this is self-priming. You jiggle it up and down and it'll start the siphon. And that, in conjunction with your turkey baster, is going to allow you to get all the fuel out of the gas tank so you can remove any contaminants or sediment that's already in there. Of course, your new fuel pump assembly, if you're going to put one in. And this is the Google Tech uh, replacement fuel line. I had to use this because the one that came with the fuel pump didn't have the right size on the bar bend. You'll need uh, hose clamps and a variety of other tools.
tools, bits and pieces. But that's pretty much what you're going to need for this project. A little patience and you'll be able to get this job done in probably about two hours. The first things we have to do is to remove some plastic. We're going to take off the left and right uh, gas tank shroud, you know, the, uh, the black parts. We're going to take off the red shroud on either side and I'm not going to go into that process. You'll have to figure that one out. We also have to take off the gas cap uh, filler assembly and the reason for that is we have to remove this entire top shroud so that we can get to the fuel pump which resides right here. So it's a simple matter of removing the six screws that hold this cap in place. I've already removed three of them and we pull that assembly off. Now I've already got a Google Tech in the gas tank fuel filter here which I've staged. I'm going to pull that out and get it out of the way and then with all the screws loose this housing just pulls right off and I'll put it someplace where I'm not going to step on it as I'm doing the project. The next thing I want to do is to put a rag in the hole so that should I drop something in there uh, or I can't drop something in there it keeps things from getting inside keeps us from making the job even worse than it is right now. I want to remind you that you need to siphon out as much gas as you can or start this project when the bike is nearly empty. This is the best rest moto siphon. It's a jiggler siphon. Once you start the siphon by jiggling it up and down then uh, you can continue draining out all the fuel and it'll take most of it out of the, uh, out of the gas tank. Uh, try to get the siphon off to the right side because your pump's over here so you have more room on the right side to do the process. I've already siphoned all this out but this is just a reminder you want to get the fuel out of the tank and get as much out as possible. Once we've got all of our gas tank plastic out of the way we come over to the left side and using a screwdriver we're going to loosen this cover it just snaps in place pull it off to the side then we have three fittings. We have the fuel line and we have a couple electrical fittings. What we're going to do is release these fittings, pull them off to the side. And this fuel line right here is released by a small uh, release tab right there. I press it and then gently squeeze and lift. and it pops right off of the fuel pump assembly. We'll tuck these out of the way and here I'm looking at the top of the entire fuel pump housing. Take a black marker and mark one of these raised tabs on this metal ring. This is my reference point and the reason I'm doing this is I'm going to be loosening this like a big screw and when I tighten it back up I want to tighten it back to where this is pointing out away from the bike. Two items I forgot to mention in my list of tools needed is a big screwdriver and a hammer. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take and put the screwdriver on these tabs and gently tap this cap around in a counterclockwise fashion until it's finger loose and then we just rotate this entire ring about 360 degrees. There's my black mark. Just at the 360 mark this ring will pull off and we set that aside. What we're looking at is a white ring right here and the black uh, fuel pump housing here. We're going to get in with a screwdriver and gently start to lift this black assembly up. Now this is coming up a little easier than normal because I've already taken out the gasket that's down here. I'm going to talk about that in a moment. But I wanted to make it easy to film and not be fiddling with this uh, and waste valuable time. This whole assembly comes up and when it does 
uh, we have to be careful as we lift it because what you're seeing right here is the uh, sensor that reads your float level. And if we just start pulling on this, we're going to cause damage. So, uh, using some care, we're going to gently lift this out and twist a little bit, and the entire fuel pump assembly comes out. What you're not seeing on the bottom of this is I have already removed the strainer that is normally fitted on the bottom of this fuel pump assembly. And the reason I did that is I'm going to talk about that in a separate clip. But there's the entire assembly ready for us to start doing some work. And right there is the invisible fuel filter. Sealed at the factory, you can't get into it. But that's where the fuel filter is. The pump sucks it up through this strainer comes in here under high pressure through this hose, goes into this filter. This filter catches, hopefully, all the contaminants, and then it comes out through the fuel line and goes to your injectors. Because I've got 13 years of service on this bike, whatever's been sloshing around in the tank, hopefully has now been strained here and hasn't gotten to my injectors. Um, we're going to clean this filter, we're going to back flush it, and that'll eliminate any goop that's in there. We sure don't want to replace this unit because it's about $500. So we use care, we do a little bit of work ourselves, we save a lot of money, and we can also eliminate the possibility of crud getting into the tank to begin with, contaminating this filter uh, by putting the Google Tech in the neck fuel filter. That'll strain out anything that goes into the gas tank from uh, the fuel pump at the gas station including water, dirt, rust, and other contaminants. Down here, there's a gasket that fits. You don't see it because I've already taken it out. Normally it's soft and pliable, but if it's left out for any length of time, uh, out of gas, it'll shrink down and it'll get loose and floppy. I put this gasket back in place just to show you what I'm talking about by loose and floppy. Because this hasn't been in fuel for about a week as I've been filming this and working on other projects, if I were to try to seat this fuel pump assembly down in here, uh, it wouldn't make a good connection. It comes out too easy. So all I have to do is take this and soak it in fuel, gasoline, for several hours, and it'll become soft and pliable, it'll expand the way that it needs to, and it makes installation quick and easy. Note that if I had taken this fuel pump assembly off without draining out the fuel, uh, if I had gas up to this level or above, it's all going to drain over the side of the bike. So that's why we did the first uh, siphon uh, well, you know, through the nozzle of the fueler, filler. Um, and then we use the moto siphon, jiggling up and down, to remove any fuel that's still in this lobe. There's also a jet pump on the other side of the tank that, that uses a uh, motor to run fuel over to this side. Otherwise you'd have one lobe that was filled with fuel and the other one wouldn't be. So we're going to also have to get on that side and clean that out. The reason we're cleaning it out is if we look down inside this gas tank, this is where the stuff accumulates way down in the bottom. Now that's perfectly clean right now because I have gone in and cleaned that out, and I'm going to show you what I found. But what you're wanting to do is to clean that fuel out and use your turkey baster to suck out the last remnants and then wipe that tank perfectly clean so you start fresh. Here we are on the right side of the gas tank. We want to get into this lobe here and clean out all the contaminants that have accumulated at the bottom. And we're going to be taking this ring off again, just like we did on the other side. Now you could probably do that process without removing any of these hoses. You can leave them in place. We'll give that a try and see how that works. Once again, I've marked my black mark right there. And I'm going to start tapping. that cap around 
until it's loose. And then I'll take it off by hand. Gently pull or pry this apart so that I can get inside and use my turkey baster to suck up all the bits and pieces that are down inside. If I pry this cap aside and I look down, I can see my jet pump and I can also see an accumulation of sand and dirt and other stuff down inside. Let's see if we can get a, a view of that. Now what we're doing is we're looking down in the very corner of the gas tank. You can see the lines that come from the jet pump. If I can get my turkey baster down inside there, I can suck off all the gas and all the other things that have accumulated down inside the tank. Finally reach in with a rag maybe on the end of a, a pair of forceps or something and clean that thing thoroughly and remove any contaminants. Once that's done, I simply press my white cap back in place, refit my ring, when you're fitting this, you want to make sure that you don't, quote, cross-thread it. But there's my, my mark right here. I almost have to go back to exactly the same spot, make sure that I'm lined up, and then start tightening this ring, because I want this black point to come right back where I started, and then use my hammer. Keep tapping it around until I get right to where it was that I started. And that's nice and tight, and I didn't have to remove any of these hoses. You could if you wanted to, in which case there's a quick release fuel fitting right here, and you can pull these two little vent hoses off. I put a piece of white tape on there marked white because that fitting right there has a W on it. So I didn't want to get them mixed up. I put this here to make sure that it indicates which, uh, which vent hose it goes to. So we're done on the right side. Uh, let's go back to the other side and we'll start working on the fuel pump itself. We've laid the fuel pump out on the table and what we have to do is take this apart so that we can work on things without causing any damage and so that we can uh, make the process easier. I recommend you use your cell phone and take several pictures showing the location of how the fuel hose is routed, how the wires are routed, and so on, so that you can go back and recreate this and get it right. Here's our, our fuel float. This sends a sensor or a signal to the uh, instrument cluster and tells you what your fuel level is. We want to disconnect this wire right here by simply lifting this tab and pulling out the blue connector. We have a uh, connector that goes to the actual fuel pump assembly here and it's got a small uh, depress tab we would reach in here and press on this detent tab right here and that allows us to loosen the wires. There's only really two connections here that we have to worry about. Next we have to remove the main fuel pump from the upper fuel pump and there's three Torx screws that hold everything in place. One, two, and there's a third one right there. Three. Before we do that, there's also a 
wire that's attached right here it's a grounding wire we want to pull that loose so we can get the harness apart <coughs> and here's what we end up with actually this would stick in place because when these come on the bike this fuel hose is really crimped on tight I would recommend that you take a knife and you just slit the fuel line so that you can remove the line from the pump assembly. You can see the slit that I made right here to get this off. These are press fit and heated at the factory and when this fuel line was installed it was uh, mostly opaque kind of a milky white and due to the fuel it's turned into a chocolate brown that tells me that this is maybe nearing the end of its life. Make sure we keep all of our screws together. In the videotaping of this uh, I misplaced a couple and had to scramble around in the garage so keep keep track of your things put them in a dish or a tray. <clears throat> so here we have the upper fuel pump assembly and this is really the the filter here and the fuel pump controller right here and this is a fitting that allows you to uh, connect the fuel line. We're going to remove this. Now don't be afraid it's not going to hurt anything. We're going to take a large uh, crescent wrench and just unscrew that and there's a reason for it. We want to be able to get to where we can flush this assembly with fuel and with uh, injector cleaner. You notice that little o-ring. Now that o-ring was a problem for me because when I was working on this assembly and doing video uh, there's a fitting inside here and it came off and I had to search all over for it. So be very careful with the parts and keep them organized. This pipe uh, type thread is going to be covered with some white chalky material. Just take your your awl, clean all that stuff out so that you don't contaminate your fuel when you put things back together and when we do reassemble we're going to be using some Teflon tape to make those threads uh, gas tight. Cleaning the threads is also important in the female part of this housing we want to clean all this out and we want to make sure we don't let any of the stuff fall down inside. So right now if I was the fuel pump sending fuel into this filter it would come up through here through this barb it would go through the filter and it would come out under high pressure right here through that fitting that we just removed and then it would go to the fuel line. We're going to clean this entire assembly right here and uh, restore it to almost like new condition. So that's next in the process. To remove this fuel pump from the plastic housing, it's simply a matter of spreading these wings and pushing up from the bottom, and out comes the fuel pump. There's the new fuel pump that I'm going to put it in. It's rated to the same uh, ratings as the original pump. Um, it's a fraction of the price. It's made by quantum fuel systems. This comes with a small mesh bag that fits on the bottom but uh, it would normally replace this green mesh bag provided by BMW. The trouble is that once this is when this comes from the factory with the pump in place this fitting right here is pressed on in such a way that it's very very difficult to get apart and the reason is that there's a tiny little piece right in here it acts like a one-way washer and it presses down onto the stud on the end of the fuel pump and almost locks in place and if you just try to pull it off by brute force you're going to damage something. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be sliding a screwdriver 
in between these plastic pieces and you're just going to be basically wedging and gently working this piece up off of the end of this little nipple right here. That little nipple. You can see the marks right here where that little uh, press washer was making contact. But by very carefully, gently prying a little bit at a time, pretty soon this came up and out. And if you can see inside there, there's three little wings that made contact. And I was able to save this whole housing and uh, I can reuse it. The other thing about this is there was a uh, this green mesh filter that was at the bottom of the BMW fuel pump which is pressed on and the only way I was able to get that off was to take a hacksaw and cut the metal a little bit and peel it back because I'm going to replace this green mesh with the white mesh provided by uh, the fuel pump supplier. It's a better quality mesh. It's got two or three layers inside. It's, it's uh, better than the one that came from the factory. So I'm going to be pressing this on at some point and then I'm going to be pressing this onto the end of the fuel pump uh, when I replace it. So we might as well do that now and show the process. Out comes the old pump in goes the new pump, just snaps right in place. Down, there you go. All I'm going to do now is I'm going to press this fitting onto the end of that fuel pump. And in doing so, I have pressed this compress washer inside here onto the end of that stud and I can also push it down a little bit that way. Now that's locked in place. You'll see it when you're doing it. It's very difficult to show here on uh, this GoPro camera. And then finally I'm going to take this mesh and I'm going to press this down onto the end of this fitting without crushing the mesh. Now I'll probably turn off the camera and use both hands. It's difficult to talk over the camera. But it's got a couple of detents here and here that make this pretty much a tough press fit and I want to be careful when I'm doing that. When we see this next I'll have it in place. Here's a tip I learned just now in order to get that that locking ring onto the little stud at the end of the fuel pump, this little nipple right here. I placed this fitting on a hard surface. I put a screwdriver into this upper slot and then I simply tapped on this screwdriver twice and that forced the entire plastic housing onto that nipple and everything is good now. So that's a tip that I learned sharing it with you. I got my new screen mesh onto the end of this large uh, plastic ring. I didn't push from this side, instead I grabbed it from both sides and I carefully twisted and pushed. I carefully twisted and pushed until I got it all the way down to the flange right there. It's important that you get everything in place so that the vibration of the bike uh, going down the trail doesn't knock anything loose. So I've got my new fuel filter in place. I've got my new mesh screen in place. Now we've got to go to the process of actually cleaning out this invisible filter. So what's the process? Normally fuel goes up here and comes out here. Well if it'll go one way and it traps contaminants on one side of the filter, let's back flush it and trap contaminants and flush them out that way. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to plug this input barb. You just put a, a rubber plug on. Now we've got these, I'll probably include these in the kits because it's something that most people don't have and we've got a bunch of them in the shop. 
We then have to fill this filter with a combination of fuel and injector cleaner. And what we're going to do that with is our turkey baster, which I have trimmed the tip off and I've actually taken and cut it to the point where I can get a couple of threads on it like that and it'll stay in place. And then when I remove the bulb carefully, this becomes kind of a funnel. It allows me to uh, put injector cleaner and gasoline in here, at least 50% injector cleaner, and let it go inside and permeate and dissolve any contaminants that are inside. And at first this thing will quickly empty down into the filter and then the process will slow down as this saturates. And once that's done, then I remove the turkey baster. I put my thumb over this hole and I'm going to shake this thing back and forth. What I'm doing is I'm sloshing the injector cleaner around inside. It's not coming out the bottom because I have my cap, but I'm basically giving this a good hard shake like a, like a paint mixer at a paint store. And once I've done that and I've let it soak for a little while, then I'm going to put it over my glass bowl that isn't going to be filled with parts like it is right now. And I'm going to pull this cap and I'm going to drain out all the crap that's inside. You're going to be surprised what you find. It's probably going to be black, uh, the color of shoe polish sometimes. And I'm going to repeat that process. I'm just going to keep doing that again until I've cleaned this out and I've got all the contaminants out of this filter. And then finally, I'll give it a, a light blow from a uh, compressed air hose. Not hard because I don't want to damage the the filter material, but I'm just basically going to blow all this stuff out the bottom side. And I just keep doing that until the fluid runs clear and free. And this may take you half a dozen times. But the important thing is to do it right until any fluid that comes through the turkey baster and out the other side is clean, clear, and is not discolored. It took me a whole uh, container of fuel injector cleaner to make that work. So yours is probably going to be about the same. I'm going to show you the process of filling the filter with solvent so that you understand how it goes. I've got my turkey baster screwed into that fitting. I've got my little cap on the end down below and what I'm doing is I'm allowing the solvent to go down inside the filter and I can hear it gurgling as it works its way down inside. It's filling that filter from the inside towards the outside. And as the level drops I'll add some more solvent and gas mix and let it percolate down. You're going to get some spillage, so use care, fire precautions and all that. Since I've already done this, I'm going to speed things up. I've got this filled with solvent mix. I've got my cap on the end. I'm going to shake that vigorously so that I stir things around and I'm going to let it soak for maybe an hour. And once I've done that, then I'll remove that cap and allow anything inside to pour out. And down below, you can see that the fluid is coming out through the filter. It probably had dried out since I actually uh, did this process. So right now what it's doing is uh, it's impregnating the filter material. Normally you'd see a big stream of fluid coming out of here once I pulled 
uh, that filler cap off the bottom and I can shake it a little bit and get it to come out. When I did it the first time this came out uh, a dark gray color I won't say black but it was pretty well uh, contaminated. And I can let that drain off, get rid of all that stuff, and then I'd go on to the next step, which is attaching all the hoses, all the fittings, and so on. You see the process. Once again, you're filling down through here. You've capped this off. You get this full of fluid, combination of fuel and uh, injector cleaner, and then let it drain out several times. And the final step that you're going to do is take an air hose, maybe wrap a little bit of tape around it so it fits, and gently blow into this opening so that you're expelling the fluid out the far side. I won't do it in the garage here because I'll make a mess and the wife will complain. But I'm going to go outside right now and blow the rest of that stuff out. When I mentioned using an air hose and sticking it in the end and blowing it, Notice how I've taken the end of my air nozzle and I just wrapped some tape around it so that when I put this in here I have an almost airtight seal. A couple of good gentle blows and you'll blow all that crap out the far end, out that tube right there. I want to talk for a moment about this fuel quick disconnect fitting that you're looking at right now. This came out of the top of the filter housing. Uh, I did a lot of fiddling around when I was making this movie and I was working on three or four different projects at the same time. And in that process of doing it, I happened to lose the O-ring that fits onto the inside of this that makes it a gas tight seal. You can see the O-ring is in there now. I had to go source that uh, at a specialty supply store. Of course BMW wouldn't sell it. But all that does is it seals uh, the fuel line so that any pressure in the tank doesn't go out unless there's an on-demand system or, or the, uh, the fuel line is connected. If you lose that, let me know. I can get one for you. There's a little fitting inside and a little spring. Just pay attention to that. When I put this into the fuel pump assembly itself, I'm going to want to wrap that with some Teflon tape. And the purpose of that, of course, is to prevent any fuel leak at that critical point. So I'm going to wrap that around, and then I'm going to take and reinstall it. Normally, BMW uses a putty type material, but the Teflon tape will work just fine. I tighten it down as far as I can by hand, and I do a final tight using a wrench or a crescent wrench until that is bottomed out all the way down to the bottom. And we are tight. So we've taken our boiling water and we've put our Googletech fuel line in there to make these soft. I'm going to take the large barb which fits on the pump or the filter itself and I'm going to twist that on until I get it all the way up to the end and then slide on a hose clamp. Then this pump assembly is going to fit down in this fashion so we want to put this over the hose before we connect to the pump itself and once again we'll slide on a hose clamp. We're getting these in place so we don't have to do it after the fact. And then it's a matter of forcing that down onto the fuel pump until it's all the way down tight and then we tighten up our hose clamp. So once again Put it on the fuel filter first, hose clamp through the hole, and then put it on the fuel pump, hose clamp, and you're ready to go. Make sure you tighten down the hose clamps all the way because this is under a lot of pressure. You don't want this hose to pop off unexpectedly.
Let's talk for a minute about fuel hoses. This is the hose that came off of the original system. It had a 9.5 barb on the fuel filter and on the pump it had an 8 millimeter barb. If you're just changing the or if you're just flushing the fuel filter, then get the Google Tech uh, fuel line because it has the proper 9.5 here and it has an 8 here. But if you're replacing the filter like I did, I was mistaken. I thought that these were two different sizes and they are not. In fact, this hose that came from the fuel filter supplier is the proper one to fit onto the filter and is the proper one to fit onto the pump itself. So we're going to go back a little bit and heat our water because this won't go on easily. It's too hard to fit. So we're going to boil this water. We're going to take and dip the ends of these uh, fuel lines into the boiling water, make them nice and soft and pliable, and then we're going to put them on uh, in just a moment. So we've dipped our, or held our, fuel hose in this boiling water for a couple of minutes. So it makes the ends nice and soft and pliable. We'll shake out any extra water, and we'll push that hose onto the barb of the filter. And even though it's pliable, it's not easy. Then we're going to slip a hose clamp on. Remember that this housing is going to go down onto here and clamp in place, screw in place. So we want to put our hose clamp on. We'll tighten that down before we close things up, make that nice and secure. And the other end, we're going to curl around and fit it onto the barb of the fuel pump. And once again, we'll put the clamp on before we fit that in place. That one went on easier. Now it's just a matter of tightening up these hose clamps so they're nice and secure so nothing moves when we're bouncing down the trail. Notice how I routed that hose around just the way that it was originally. I don't want to have any kinks or anything like that. Another thing we're going to do since we're in this position is we're going to put these screws back and hold our housing to the fuel filter assembly. Notice that I have not fitted the uh, fuel sensor yet. Until I get all the heavy lifting done, I want to leave that off. One reason I didn't tighten up these hose clamps immediately is should I need to twist this this fuel line just a little bit to get their proper orientation I can do that while things are still loose but once I tighten them up it makes it more difficult. By twisting just a little bit I can nestle that hose in at a better position so that it's more like the factory system. And you'll notice that this well, maybe you can't tell, but this black fuel line is a little longer than the stock one. That's all right. It doesn't make any difference. It looks like it's about uh, three inches longer. We still have plenty of room inside the gas tank to make this work. I'll get these tightened down, and we'll move on to the next clip. Okay, the fuel hose has been secured with our hose clamps. at both ends, nice and secure. 
Now we're going to make our electrical connections. Click it down till it snaps. This little grounding wire I'll bring around the back side and hook it onto this little connector there. That looks good. The only thing we have left to do is fit the fuel sensor. You know, as this thing moves up and down with the float, there's a little rheostat there. I think that's what that's called. It sends a signal and that will uh, tell your instruments what's going on. So we fit that in place and that basically snaps down. Now this wire needs to be routed kind of carefully. You don't want it to sit over here where it can get in the way of this floating arm. So this needs to go up and above, kind of make a curl and snap in place in that fashion. So around, behind, up, and in place. So we have a new fuel pump, we have new fuel lines, we have flushed this filter, we have replaced the quick disconnect uh, fuel fitting. Well, we didn't replace it, we pulled it out, flushed from the top downward. And now we're ready to reinstall this into the gas tank of the motorcycle. So we'll set up again and we'll film that process. A couple hours ago when I was doing the first part of this video I showed you this gasket. There's a top and a bottom. The wider portion of the gasket, I guess you'd call it the flange, goes at the top and the narrower portion goes in the bottom and this has been soaking in fuel for a couple of hours and now when I push this down into place it's swelled out and is a nice fit without any wiggling or movement and that's exactly what we want if this is dried out you're gonna have problems getting this to fit trust me I learned the hard way so the way that this fuel pump assembly orients is there's a tab right here and there's a slot right here on the white ring. This is how it has to go into the bike. We've got to work it down into the bike missing the crossover jet pump hose that's inside there. Get this inside and make sure that the float is not sticking. Now right now I've pre-positioned this gasket so that I can work this inside. By moving the body panel to the side and gently working things down inside, including the new fuel line, I'm going to get all this stuff back inside the gas tank. And there we have it. Down nice and tight and flush. I checked to make sure that this gasket has not been twisted because if it is, I'm going to have fuel leakage around this white ring. I've got the tab installed in the white ring. This thing is solid and secure. There shouldn't be any lateral movement in any direction. That tells me that the thing has been seated properly. Next we take our big, I guess you'd call this a, a round nut, and we place it on top. Remember we had our reference point, and the starting spot of that was just about right here, and the finishing part of that is also right there. Clicked into place, and now as I tighten this by hand, it's going to be sealing the top of the fuel pump assembly. I take my hammer and screwdriver and I start to tighten this down. I'm going to be tightening it back down to the point where this 
black mark is right here. That's where I started. There's my original black mark, which is right here. I'm going to stop at this point because it feels like the assembly is tight. Feels good all the way around. Next, I'm going to connect my fuel hose, which is just going to press down into the fitting. Then snaps in place. And then I'll connect my two electrical connectors. And I finally have to fit my black plastic cap over the top and snap that down. We've basically done the heavy lifting. What we have to do now is put the red cowling back on the top of the gas tank. We have to fit the gas cap. We have to put our Google Tech filter inside, put on the rest of the body plastic, and then put some fuel in the bike and we should be able to make this thing run down the road with a completely cleaned fuel system, a new fuel pump, the filters have been cleaned, the hoses have been checked and replaced, and this bike is ready for another 15 years on the trail. You've heard me talk about the Google Tech fuel filter that goes in the neck of the gas tank. When I fill through my gas tank, the fuel goes in here, comes through the mesh, and this filters out water, dirt, sand, just about everything else. The only thing it lets go through is fuel. Without this in place, everything I put in my gas nozzle is going to end up down in my gas tank, and we're going to have to deal with that uh, in the fuel pump system and in the invisible filter. And we don't want to do that. We want to start fresh. So we want to have one of these in our gas tank. And I already put one of these in way before I ever started this process back in April or May of this year, 2018. The install process is simple. You roll up the, the wings of the filter like this. I have put one of the install tools inside the neck. This just helps me spread it out once I get it down in place. And then I, I slip this filter down into the hole of the gas tank and I use the tool to spread the wings once it's inside. The reason that we spread those wings is so that uh, we get maximum exposure of the filter to the fuel. That will speed the filling process and we're done. Depending on the, the bike model, this may sit tight in the neck or it may sit slightly proud of the bottom flange of the fuel filler nozzle, but that snaps down in place and we're ready to go. Now when I put fuel in the tank, it's filtered first by the Google Tech neck filter. Second is going to be filtered by that mesh strainer at the bottom of the fuel pump. And third is going to be filtered by the invisible filter that we just reconditioned and reinstalled in the bike. Well, we finished with our project. We put in a new fuel pump. We flushed the invisible fuel filter. We replaced the fuel line did a few other projects to the bike, and get it ready for another 15 years on the road. Uh, put fuel in the tank, and now let's see if it runs. This is where the rubber meets the road. Takes a minute for the fuel pump to prime. And there we go. Of course, no project is really completed until the, the bike's been out on the road and we put a few miles on it, but I'm pretty sure this thing is going to do exactly what I thought it was going to do. It's been an interesting project, a lot of little details. I know this has been a really long video, but we want to show you all the little bits and pieces that you'll need to be able to do this with confidence and do it yourself and save you know, 750 800 maybe a thousand bucks. Anyhow, uh, we'll be making more of these. We've made some others on the Google Tech uh, fuel filters, the cycle pump, uh, servicing your bike, all sorts of different things. Thanks for watching. This is David with Best Rest Products, home of the cycle pump tire inflator that has a lifetime warranty. We'll see you on the trail.